far, far away. On a planet called Hokitate, lives an everyday salary man named Olimar, who works a dead-end job as an intergalactic cargo mover. During one of his routine trips out into space, his ship is struck by a meteor, and he is sent plummeting down to planet Earth. But this isn't your typical Earth. This is Earth long after humanity has gone extinct, so there's no one around to help. And even if there were, they probably wouldn't be able to see Olimar on account of him only being an inch tall. So Olimar searches around the forest for a while and eventually comes across what appears to be a red-colored onion. As he approaches the onion, it suddenly comes to life and spits out a bunch of seeds that quickly sprout into little tiny flower people he decides to name Pikmin. Strangely enough, the Pikmin instinctively look up to Olimar and await his guidance. And so, Olimar takes the Pikmin under his wing, and makes them fight against the dangerous wild animals of the forest. And boy, are there a lot of them. And they all really, really want to kill Pikmin for some reason. Thankfully, there's more than one type of Pikmin to help Olimar on his journey. Along with the red Pikmin who can survive extreme temperatures, there's also the blue Pikmin who can breathe underwater, and the yellow Pikmin who can jump really high and carry bombs. Oh no. Yellow Pikmin, there's a fiery blowhog right behind you. Oh god, he's got his pick pods in, he can't hear the whistle, oh god no! With the Pikmin's help, Olimar manages to recover some of the missing parts to repair his ship. The game's ending is determined by the amount of ship parts he can collect, before 30 days pass and his life support gives out. There's the bad ending, where Olimar's ship fails to take off, he dies of oxygen poisoning, and the Pikmin use the onion to reincarnate his body. And then there's the good ending, where Olimar escapes back to his home planet, finds out that his company is in debt, his ship is sold off, and he is immediately sent back to Earth to make more money for his boss. Wait, did I say good ending? So Olimar and his new assistant Louie, who is the whole reason they're in debt in the first place, rejoin with the Pikmin and scour the land for more treasure. But things on Earth are a bit different this time around. Not only are there two new types of Pikmin, there's also a plethora of fresh and exciting new enemies, like Orange Bulborb, Leaf Bulborb, Fiery Bulborb, Hairy Bulborb, and this godforsaken creature. Eventually, our two captains collect enough treasure to pay off their company's debt, and so they return back to Hokotate. But whoops! Olimar forgot Louis back on Earth. In order to avoid a potential lawsuit, the president decides to accompany Olimar back to Earth and help search for Louis. The two manage to weasel their way down a long and dangerous cave system, where, at the bottom, they find Louis perched atop a giant mechanical spider. But no, he's not in danger, he is the danger. Somehow, Louis descended through the hardest dungeon in the game, all by himself. Frickin' jab locking bull borbs into oblivion, and hacked into the brain of the game's final boss, which he then commands to attack his former co workers. Unfortunately for him, Louis underestimated Pikmin power, and his spider gets destroyed. As his fellow associates aren't fully aware of Louis' true intentions, they pack his unconscious body back into the ship and bid the Pikmin farewell once again. Due to booming populations, booming hunger, and a basic lack of planning, the planet Kopai is on the brink of ruin. As a last ditch effort, three space explorers are sent to procure food from planet Earth. However, as they approach the planet, something goes terribly wrong, and their ship explodes, causing their cosmic drive key to get lost somewhere on the planet, making it impossible for them to leave. On the bright side, there's tons of fruit to collect and just enough unpaid workers to carry them all. As per tradition, there's also two new pigment species that are so overpowered that you rarely will have a reason to ever want to use the old ones. Meanwhile, Olimar and Louis also land back on Earth for different reasons. Olimar to collect enough treasure to buy back his old ship, and Louis because he wanted free food. After picking up the cosmic drive key, Olimar chases after a shiny object and ends up getting kidnapped by a... This thing. It's not trying to hurt Olimar or anything, it just has a crush on him. And really, 
Can you blame it? Like any good space friend, Louis quickly and with no hesitation runs away and ends up being taken in by the Copites, who believe that Louis is actually Olimar, who they recognize because he's been leaving his Pikmin 3 walkthrough all across the lands for them to collect. Keeping up his tradition of being the worst guy ever, Louis steals the Copite's entire food supply and runs off into the wilderness, only to be eaten by, uh, this other thing. Seriously, who is designing these Pikmin enemies and are you okay? The Copites reluctantly save Louis and use some gentle persuasion to get him to reveal the location of the actual Captain Olimar. After collecting enough juice to last them through a nuclear winter, they move on to the final area and confront the strange creature, who proceeds to Godzoom. Olimar and transforms into its final form a slightly scaled up version of its initial form. Using the age old strategy of just throw a bunch of rocks at your enemy until they give up and leave, the Copites are victorious and rescue Olimar, who hands over the cosmic drive key as a reward. Our combined team of space friends give a fond farewell to the Pikmin and return back to their respective planets, where the Copites save their planet from mass extinction and Olimar manages to buy back his old ship. A happy end. Oh wait, we left Louie behind again. A happy end, but wait. A few questions still remain unanswered. What was the Plasm Wraith? Why did it want Olimar's space booty so bad? And how does it all lead to a potential final confrontation in Pikmin 4? Well, put on your tinfoil hats because we're about to jump into some conspiracy theories. First off, let's analyze what we do know about this sparkling menace. It has a strange fondness for Olimar, and it bears a striking resemblance to the Gulix and the Water Wraith, two bosses from the previous games. A popular theory in the Pikmin fandom, and yes, we have a fandom, is that these three are actually the same creature who has been following Olimar since the very first game. But wait, shouldn't it be dead since we defeated it in the first two games? Well, as explained by the ship in Pikmin 2, this monster's true form actually lies in another dimension, meaning that destroying its physical form on Earth does nothing but slow it down. In Pikmin 3, not only is it shown to have survived once again, it's also visibly angry at the Copites for taking its precious Olimar away. If that's not enough fuel for your angsty Pikmin fanfics, the best ending to Pikmin 3 leaves with an unnerving question. What caused the Copite ship to randomly explode when it was entering Earth's atmosphere? The answer may lie in the Japanese version of Pikmin 2. Translating the water race name to English, it reads as a combination of Amoeba and Umibozu. If you're like me and you have no idea what Japanese folklore even is, basically the Umibozu is a mythical spirit known to capsize ships at sea. Perhaps the Plasm Wraith is the one bringing space explorers down to Earth. This would explain why almost every single landing on the planet has ended in a failure. Maybe it just wants some friends to play with and is trying to destroy their ships so that they won't be able to leave. Or maybe there's another unexplained reason we have yet to uncover. Is the Plasm Wraith pulling the strings behind the entire Pikmin series? Or am I looking too far into a game about tiny elf creatures with little leaves on their heads? Only time will tell as the story continues in Pikmin 4. <sighs> Eventually. Also, don't mention Hey Pikmin to me, that game doesn't exist. Subscribe for more, thanks for watching. If there's a game or series they'd like to see me cover, then leave a comment below telling me what it is, and I'll try to get to it when I can. This video was a bit different from how I usually make videos, so hopefully it turned out okay. I'm slowly getting better at drawing, so I'm trying to get more and more animated as it goes on, so things are gonna get weird and hopefully get better by the end. <laughs> see you next time.